my Lord Father. Oh, my Father, may we be ever so careful, oh God, to give you the glory, to give you the praise, and to give you the thanksgiving. Oh, may come through no other name but the precious name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. I love you forever with all my heart. to his disciples. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus appears to Thomas. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my fingers where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Through the, the, though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. May the Lord have a blessing in the reading of his word. Amen. Good morning, St. Paul. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and uh, we can sing something like a little beat for happening today, so y'all follow me, so we know what. Who am I? You are mindful of me. Just think about it. That you hear me when I
and then we have Word on Wednesday at the evening time via Zoom. We also have on Saturday, May 20th, 2023, from 6 to 7 p.m., our Saturday evening book club. And we, as we continue to read in My Grandmother's House by Dr. Yolanda M. Pierce. And on Saturday, the 20, April 22nd at 1.30 p.m., the Annette C. Jones Lay Organization will have a virtual estate planning seminar presented by our attorney, Juanita Wills. That will be delivered via Zoom. And thank you again. I hope everyone has a blessed and wonderful week. Amen. Amen. visitors that we might have on the virtual platform. We certainly, if you are uh, joining us via, via um, uh, YouTube or Facebook Live or Zoom, we are so grateful that you are with us, amen. However you chose to be a part of the service, either now or maybe even re-watching it later in the day, we are better because you are with us, amen. To all of you that are online, to those of you that are in the sanctuary, we say praise the Lord and welcome to, uh, as Sister Jackson said, one of the best churches in African Methodism, St. Paul AME Church, Washington, D.C. Somebody say amen. 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 So we greet you this morning. We thank God for all of the announcements that have been shared um, and ask that you would govern yourselves accordingly. Certainly pray for those persons, um, for Sister Lloyd and others that may be walking through the valley of the shadow of death, and certainly for those that are on prayer and concerns list. Continue to pray. Anybody know prayer changes things? Yeah. Anybody can testify along with Sister Jackson that when you needed prayer and you know that the saints were praying for you, what a difference it made. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Amen. So we are grateful this morning. We continue to lift them up. We lift up all those that are celebrating birthdays throughout the entire month. Amen. Yeah. What a joy it is to celebrate another birthday, another milestone. And so we thank God for that. Uh, because it truly is a gift from God to be able to say, I'm celebrating a birthday, amen. I take a moment to lift up uh, <clears throat> one of my uh, many cousins, but one of my cousins in Nebraska who will be 103 on Tuesday. So I'm giving a shout out to Cousin Ruth, amen. And I was blessed to be able to see her this week, and I just praise God for that. God is, God is gracious, amen. So let me, let me, um, uh, as I said, I'm grateful for all of you in the house this morning. And I don't, I don't do it enough, but I want to give a shout out. Um, I give a shout out for our, our technical team, our ministry, our technical ministry. Brother Brock is, 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 a, is a villain this morning, and I know he's frustrated because he is an expert in what he does. And so we thank God for him working through. Amen. Thank you, Brother Brock, for being here this morning. And to, to all of those that, that help us every week to be able to, to do what we do and make a difference, not only in here, but um, in cyberspace, amen, in the cyber sanctuary. So we thank God. And then for our music ministry, for Dr. Cummings, we thank God for him. And we thank God for Brother Bo and Sister Crystal. Crystal, okay. Sister Crystal, come on, somebody say amen. Amen. I said to them, okay, I can't really welcome you because you've been here and I, and since before I was here. So we're glad you're back. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. What a difference it makes when we can worship the Lord. Um, the, the, the word of God says to make a joyful noise. Let all the instruments, amen, with the, with the cymbals and with the, with the, with the, the percussion and with the everything. Amen. So we're grateful. Come on, let's celebrate and show some love for them this morning. I, don't, I do want to remind you this weekend um, within the District of Columbia it is Emancipation Day celebration. So we, if you have not participated, we hope that you will. But just take a moment to thank God, amen, for, for this day celebrates that there were those that were enslaved within the District of Columbia, amen, supposedly the seat of government. And so we thank God that, that, they, that freedom was, was, was um, realized. Amen. And so we thank God for this day. And then I do want to also remind us that uh, those that may not know, um, 
Um, we are, of course, in the Capital District, but the presiding elder and first lady of the Potomac District, the Reverend Dr. Um, uh, Ronald Eugene Braston and the Reverend Dr. Marie Phillips Braston will be retiring after a combined 100 years of ministry. Wow. He is, amen. We have been, he has been in ministry 55 years, she in 45, 45 years. And so there will be uh, a celebration uh, for not only those within the Washington Conference, but across the connection uh, that will be celebrating their ministries, their marriage, their ministries, and all that they mean to the body of Christ on this uh, Friday at Kingdom Fellowship AME Church. So we certainly want to invite you to be a part of that fellowship and that celebration, amen. I'm not sure if it will be streamed, but certainly we invite you as you're able to, to join um, and, and, and see the new edifice that is uh, Kingdom Fellowship, amen. So we want to mention that. And then certainly everything that is going forth in the body of the church, we ask that you would participate, that you would be a part of it, amen. Anybody know? that ministry and church and church fellowship is more than on Sunday morning. Amen. It really is. It's about getting involved and being a part. Amen? So if you're not involved, we encourage you to do so. Somebody say amen. amen. If you don't see a ministry that, that, that excites you, then let me know and we'll see if we can't start something. Amen. 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 All right. All right. I think that's it in terms of announcement. Um, we're going to keep the service moving forward. It is giving time in the house of the Lord. Somebody say amen. It's giving time. Amen. And when we think of how good God has been to us, we can't do anything else. We can't do anything else other than rush to give unto the Lord. Amen. So if you've not already done so, we invite you to give. If you are giving um, via check or cash, you can certainly your offering in the basket in the back of the sanctuary as you depart. If you are online or if you just prefer to do electronically, as I have already done, uh, we invite you to utilize Givelify, look up St. Paul um, AME, Washington, D.C., and give um, that the Lord, uh, because the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Anybody know the Lord loves a cheerful giver? And I don't know about you, but I'm cheerful. I'm grateful that I can give back unto the Lord because I know it all comes from him. Amen. 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 So let's look to the Lord. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you, Lord, that we recognize and we acknowledge that all things, everything comes from you. Everything is a gift from you. And so we're not giving out of anything that we owe you. And we're certainly not giving uh, out of something that we did on our own, but we're giving back to you a portion of all that you have given unto us. Use it, Lord God, for the upbuilding of your kingdom, that, that we might um, expand the ministry that we do in this branch of Zion called St. Paul AME Church. We ask that you would bless every giver. Continue to open the window of heaven and pour out a blessing. So much so, God, that all we can do is live in the overflow. Somebody say overflow. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, come on, shout it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Let's continue as we go deeper into worship. Aged ways, you stand. And time is in your hand. Beginning and the end. Beginning and the end. You wrap yourself in love. Thank you. 
Listen now, listen now. It's nothing wrong with singing how great he is. But don't worry, you gotta remember that he made us in his image and after his likeness. And if he is great, we must be some reasonable facsimile of the person of the faith. We gotta be at least alright. So when we sing this song, understanding his greatness is a spirit on us. John chapter 20, verses 19 through 22. John chapter 20, verses 19 through 22. On the evening of the first day of the week when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, 
Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and side. The two disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, the 66 books of the Bible provide a record of the history and the future of humanity. From the moment everything was created through the words spoken by God, let there be, to the final promise in Revelation, yes, I am coming soon. There is a message of hope and a description of God's plan for eternity. And with everything recorded, I would suggest that with everything that has been recorded in these 66 books, there is no more important event than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The creation and fall of humanity, the never-ending forgiveness of God, and the failure of men and women uh, uh, to follow through and to accept that forgiveness and to follow God's plan, all of those things are important. The, the, fulfilled promise, the, pro, the fulfilled prophecy and the promise of the birth, life, and death of Jesus are critical to God's plan. The gift of Holy Spirit, the birth of the church, the growth of the church cannot be overstated, but nothing, my brothers and sisters, is more essential to our eternal salvation than the resurrection of our crucified and buried Savior. Would anyone agree with me that when all is said and done, nothing is more important than resurrection, nothing is more important than Easter Sunday, nothing is more important than the fact that and yes, he died on a cross, but he got up. Otherwise, he would just be someone else that come on a cross and died, but he got up. And that is what gives us reason to rejoice. Amen? And so it is so, and it is so significant. It is so significant that all four gospel writers share multiple perspectives on who, when, and where Jesus was seen. They want to make sure that everyone understands that it was not just a a fairy tale. It was not just a rumor, but there are eyewitnesses, eyewitness accounts of the fact that Jesus got up with all power. Amen. And and and, so, and, and, and there is a story to go, many stories to go with what happened on that first day. Amen. The eyewitness accounts confirm that He is risen from the dead, and He is risen with all power. And so this morning, I want to spend a few moments reinforcing the events of that first Sunday over 2,000 years ago. I, I know last Sunday was Resurrection Sunday. I know last Sunday was Easter. But anybody know there was more to, to be told in the story than on one story? There's, there's more to be told than one, one particular sermon. Anybody know that there's more to your story than one story? There's more to your story than an elevator pitch? There's more to your story than the, the little bit that you post on social media? Anybody can declare that if you had, if you didn't have a thousand tongues, you couldn't tell everybody. You couldn't tell everything that Jesus did for you. So this morning, I just want to talk a little bit more about that first day, that, that first Sunday, that morning, amen, after Je the morning that Jesus got up with all power, amen. And so, so last Sunday, last week, I asked the question, have you seen Jesus lately? Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. This morning, I want to preach from the theme and thought, Jesus is never locked out. Tell somebody, Jesus is never locked out. Let me suggest this morning that whether we are children or adults, whether we are young or old, there is something in our human DNA that drives us to seek freedom, even to our own detriment. From the time, from, 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 since Genesis, humanity has been given boundaries, amen? You can do everything you want. You can eat from everything you want. You can have everything you want. Leave that tree alone. And what did they do? They went running for the truth. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember that. Humanity, uh, we, we, we don't know how to stay within boundaries, amen? And, and throughout the Bible, we, we hear about how, how they were given all the freedom they wanted, all the luxury that they needed. Everything was provided, but there was still a need, in, there is still a need in, in us as humans that says, let me do more. 
Let me have more. I'm never satisfied. I know I'm not preaching to anybody in here this morning, but if you're truthful about it, amen, no matter, no matter what the boundaries are, you want to find your way out. Remember, okay, let's talk about children, not you when you were a child because you were a perfect child, but let's talk about somebody else's child, amen, that no matter where you tell them to go, they try to get out, amen. I remember when my daughter was little and I put her in the playpen and she was good in the playpen and I put her to bed in the crib and she got to a point, amen, she got to a point, Sister Marie, where I, I put her into bed and I looked up and she was toddling back in the, in the room and I'm like, wait a minute, I put you in the crib and so I took her back and I put her back in the crib again, amen, and I gave her a kiss and I said, go night, night, and I turned off the light and I went back to watching television and all of a sudden I heard noise and here she comes again because she had learned how to crawl out of the crib and down the side and come toddling to where she wanted to go. What am I saying? Some of us think that no matter what God puts around us, we're going to find a way to climb up and over and out and try to get into a little bit of mess. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit of mess. Because we think we don't, want, we don't want to be confined to where we are, amen? I mean, we, 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 we find ourselves sometimes locked in situations where everything is good and we just want more. But sometimes we find ourselves locked in uncomfortable situations and we try to want to try to figure out how to get out. Now, the reality is some of those situations we brought on ourselves. Let's tell the truth. We, we find ourselves locked into relationships. We find ourselves locked into dead-end jobs because we didn't listen. We find ourselves locked into financial burdens because it looked good and so we had to go to Macy's and spend a little bit more money. I'm just saying out there in the atmosphere. You know? And then we had to go to North. I'm just saying. And then we got a new, a, a new, a new, a new credit card in the mail. And then they, okay, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I don't know if anybody can relate to me and what I'm saying, but I'll just tell the truth on myself. Sometimes I have found myself, amen, in situations where I put myself there. Anybody can, can agree with me? Uh -huh. we, and, and, and we need, we, even though we need boundaries, we crave freedom. That's my point. It, it, let, me, let me make another example. It was three years ago that COVID-19 placed everything and everyone on lockdown. Y'all remember that? Yeah. For, for the safety of ourselves and for others, we were told to remain indoors and if we had to go out to wear masks. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. It's only been three years. Shelter in place, they said. That was an, and, 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 and there were orders to shelter in place. But we, were not, we, some of us, some folk were not happy. I was good. Some folk were not happy being at home. They had to get out. They had to go somewhere, amen? They, 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 they perceived it as punitive and punishing, and within a few short weeks, I know it's been three years, but y'all remember those first two or three weeks? Amen, within those two or three weeks, folks were complaining. They were protesting. They were urging governor, governors around the country to relax, stay at home restrictions. They said, oh no, we need to get out. Y'all remember that? While some were motivated by political pressure and ideological interests, I believe many were driven by fear. Yeah. Can I tell you the truth? They were driven by fear. Fear of an uncertain future. I can be in control if I can get out. Fear of lost income. Fear of lost freedom. Fear of lost control and being forced to remain locked in their own homes. Anybody remember when, 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 when people, anybody know anyone that just wants to get out because they're afraid? Fear of being in your own place with your own self. Some people are afraid to spend time with themselves. My God. Yeah, got to turn the TV on, have to turn the radio on, have to be on the telephone, can't spend any time with yourself. Don't you understand? I think someone said it in the prayer. We are fearfully and wonderfully, we are created in God's image. God is present. Maybe you need to turn off that television and spend a little time with Jesus. I'm just saying what I'm saying. Okay, so our text finds that there are 10 of the 12 disciples locked together in a room. That morning, the women had discovered the empty tomb and began to spread the, spin, spread the message that Jesus is alive. 
But after betraying, G and after betraying Jesus, Judas has killed himself. Thomas is not present. The remaining 10 are locked in a room because of fear. Not fear of a virus, but fear resulting from the rapid series of events over the last few days. They're shell-shocked. Anybody ever been shell-shocked? They witnessed the arrest, the mock trial, and the crucifixion of their beloved Jesus. They're and they are wrestling with their own faults and failures. After all they experienced with Jesus, after all he did for them, in the end they are faced with their own shortcomings. They denied him. They abandoned him. They left him. Amen. They, they, they moved away. Imagine Peter. Jesus had brought him into the inner circle. Jesus had moved him from being a fisherman to one who would lead many. Amen. He, Jesus had healed his mother-in-law. Jesus had taught him how to walk on water. Jesus had shown him that if you just follow me, if you keep your eye on me, I'll allow you to, 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 to experience miracles. Anybody ever been in a situation where Jesus has done so much for you, but then you are afraid because all of a sudden something comes up that you did not expect? And so after three days of stunned belief, the women have come to share the unbelievable good news that the tomb where Jesus was laid is empty. The women announce that Jesus is alive. Amen? But instead of searching for Jesus, they're locked in a room afraid. What happens after we have good news? After the celebration? After the graduation? After the wedding, amen, after everything is so hunky-dory and wonderful, do we continue on that high? Do we keep doing what we need to do to celebrate Jesus? Or after Sunday worship when everything is so great, do we continue to worship Jesus? Or do we get back into a place of fear as soon as something rises? Mm -hmm. While the Bible is clear that they were physically locked in a room, I just want to suggest to us this morning that captivity and confinement is not always physical. Truth be told, we all have experienced times when we're living behind locked doors. Barriers that keep us from moving forward. Masks that hide our pain and our struggle and our feelings of inadequacy and imprisoned by the sins of our past. Doors can slam shut when you least expect it. Moving along just fine and all of a sudden the door shuts in your face. But here's the good news because you know we got good news today. Even when you feel locked in, anybody know you are never, never, never locked out? And greater than not being locked out, even when you are locked in, Jesus is never locked out. Amen? Jesus will always find his way. Jesus will always make his way into where you are and bring you out. Somebody say amen. amen. And so the things that I just want to leave you with two points this morning and I'm done. I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters, that you are not, you are never, Jesus is never locked out because you have the peace of his presence. Yeah. You have the peace of his presence. The, the text says that even when the doors are locked, amen, Jesus found the way in. Amen. The doors were locked. The windows were locked. There was no way to get in or out. But all of a sudden they looked up and Jesus was standing in front of them. Jesus was in the midst. The, the, in the midst. The, the text tells us that when they were locked in, Jesus showed up. He returned to meet the disciples even though they didn't expect to meet him. And someone this morning can be encouraged to know that wherever you are, Jesus is there also. If nothing else, life is unpredictable. Anybody have a phone call out and re receive a phone call out of nowhere that turned your life upside down? And in the midst of unbelief, hurt, pain, anger, grief, you can feel as if you felt as if you were locked in with no way out, locked in with no solution, locked in with no escape, wanting to protest, wanting to cry, wanting to scream, ultimately facing the reality that at least for now, for this moment, there is no way out. And anybody be able to, is there anyone that can testify that in that moment, you found comfort in knowing that Jesus came to meet you right where you are, that Jesus whispered in your ear, peace be still. My brothers and sisters, it may not, it may feel like imprisonment, but it is not a life sentence. This thing, whatever that thing is that you might be in, it will come to an end. That thing that you were in, it did come to an end. Whatever it was, it did end. There is an expiration date on your pain. There is an expiration date on your hurt. There is an expiration date on your loneliness. There is an expiration 
inspiration date on your struggle. And even for the war ends, even after it ends, you have the assurance of the presence of Jesus. Because Jesus declared, Lo, I am with you always. Even when you feel locked in, you are never locked out because you have the presence of Jesus. And here's the thing about that presence. Jesus came. And he said it not once, but he said it twice. He says, peace be with you. I want you to understand that that word peace, amen, that word peace doesn't mean it's not a greeting, amen. It's not saying, hey, how you doing? Hey, I'm here. Jesus was saying, peace. I am peace. And I am here with you. You all, you all don't believe me. The text says, after Jesus showed up in the locked room, he greeted them. It's a point of importance because, because he is saying that I am peace. I am the one who is with you. I will be with you. Oh, somebody's missing this. Remember when Jesus was born 33 years before that, amen? And as, as, as he lay in a manger, having come from, from heaven on high to be born and placed in a manger, the angels descended from heaven and said to the, to the, um, to the shepherds, peace be with you, amen? Peace, amen? He says, he said, what he's saying is peace is Jesus. That's another word for Jesus. So wherever you find yourself in that struggle, peace is with you. Amen. Jesus declared it in John 14. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither be afraid. Jesus talked about peace a lot, amen? But now, after the resurrection, John wants us to know that Jesus greets them with the word peace. It's not an abstract concept and a future promise. Jesus said, now that the resurrection is over, now that I have won and now that I have, have, I have, 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 have overcome the world, now that your sins are forever forgiven, peace is a promise fulfilled. Don't miss it because of his sacrificial death and triumphant re resurrection. Peace is with you now and peace is with you forever. Amen? Amen. Jesus was on his way to heaven. Ascension is on the way. But he walked through locked doors into a locked room to bring peace to those he loved. And that's a reason for you to shout right now, right there. Nothing will stop Jesus from bringing you peace. Lord, have mercy. Hold on. God will keep you in perfect peace. Amen. If your mind is stayed on him. Hold on. The peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your heart. Amen. And your mind in Christ Jesus. Hold on. You may be in a locked room. You may be in a hospital bed. You may be locked in prison. You may be, be homebound. You may be in, in suffering with pain. But hold on. Peace is on the way. Hold on. Jesus isn't just sending peace. Jesus is bringing peace to your life. Hold on. Jesus is working it out. Hold on. Jesus is with you in the midnight hour. In fact, Jesus is with you every hour. Hold on. Jesus is with you even in the storm. Billows may roll. Breakers may dash. You shall not sway because he holds you fast. Hold on. Jesus is speaking to your storm and declaring peace. Be still. You may be locked in, but Jesus is never locked out. Amen. And there is peace because Jesus is present. Second and lastly, there is um, uh, uh, Jesus. You can be at peace because knowing that Jesus is never locked out and therefore power is always possible. When Jesus entered the locked room, he showed the frightened disciples the nail prints in his hands and the holes in, the side, in his side. And it was a reminder of the miraculous power of God. They witnessed his death only three days before, and now they witnessed him in the flesh. And they knew it was only something God could do. This is real simple. Someone this morning can testify to witnessing the power of Jesus. Someone can testify this morning that only God could have done what you experienced. Somebody, that's somebody's testimony this morning. I, I made it through and it was only because of God. It wasn't because of my GS-15. It wasn't because of my bank account. It wasn't because of who I knew. It wasn't because of my pedigree. It wasn't because of the church I belong to. It wasn't because of my last name. It wasn't because of who I know. It was because of God. It was because of the power of God. It was because God is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond anything you can ask or imagine. Is there anybody this morning that can testify that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you would not have made it. You would not be here right now. You would not even be alive right now. If it wasn't 
showed them the power of resurrection, amen? And then he breathed on them the gift of Holy Spirit. Now I know somebody, there's, a, there, there, there's someone in the room right now that's saying, wait a minute. He didn't breathe, send the Holy Spirit until, uh, until eight, uh, Acts, amen? He said, I would send the Holy Spirit when I depart. Somebody's saying, this doesn't make any sense. Anybody know <laughs> what God does doesn't always make sense. But there, everything in the word of God is true, amen? And so I, 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 I said, Lord, what are, you, what are you trying to say in this moment, amen? Jesus said, just as in Genesis, God spoke and then breathed and created life. In this moment, Jesus spoke and created new life. Amen. He breathed the Holy Spirit on the disciples and he created a new life. It was a, it was a, it was, I know Pentecost is still several weeks away, but in this moment, Jesus fulfills his final promise by giving his spirit. Amen. He, 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 he set us, he set it up when he was on the cross. His final word was, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. He gave his spirit on the cross to the Father and now as a result of his resurrection Holy Spirit is given to his disciples. It was symbolic and it was spiritual preparation for Pentecost. Anybody know we have to get ready for Pentecost. We have to get ready for what Jesus has in store for us. Jesus breathed on them as one to let them know that you can work as one. You can serve as one. You can trust as one. You can be on one accord and when all of them came together and were on one accord, that's when Holy Spirit descends. In other words, it was a foretaste yeah. of what was coming. Y'all know what a foretaste is. The, the, the hymn writer said, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Get ready, St. Paul, because better is coming. Get ready, St. Paul, because greater is on the way. This is just a sampling of all God has in store for you. I'm preaching this morning to those who feel stuck. Yeah. Stuck in the house. Stuck on your job. Stuck in a relationship you know is over. Stuck. Beloved, you may feel locked in, but I just stopped by this morning to let you know and to remind you that Jesus is never locked out. Ask Daniel. He was locked in a den of lions, but because Daniel knew how to pray, God sent angels who shut the lion's mouth. And the Bible declare, declares no wound was found on him because he trusted in God. There are no wounds on you when you trust in God. Jesus is never locked out. Ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were thrown in a, in a locked fiery furnace by themselves. And when the king looked in, he said, I see four men up in there. I only put three in there, but I see four. And the fourth man looks like the son of God. Jesus is never locked out. Come here, Paul and Silas. You were beaten and locked in a Philippian prison, but you prayed and you sang praise songs. You, and, and all the prisoners heard them and God heard them and God sent an earthquake and the doors of the prison were open because Jesus is never locked out. Don't you understand? Jesus will make his way no matter what the situation. You know the story. They hung him on a cross and after they crucified him and after he died, they locked him in a borrowed tomb. They rolled a giant 2,000 ton stone in front of the, in front of the tomb and they locked Jesus in. He was locked in on Friday. He was locked in on Saturday. But somebody can shout hallelujah early Sunday morning. He got up with all power and because of his power you are never locked out from Jesus. When you pray and when you give God praise God will shake up some things. When you give God praise God will open some doors. When you give God praise Jesus will and Jesus will bring you out. Jesus is never locked out. Jesus is never locked out. You are never, ever, ever locked out from God's grace, from God's mercy, from God's goodness, from God's protection. You are never locked out because Jesus is never locked out. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Jesus is never locked out. Come on and give God praise.
because Jesus is never locked out. And he said, I'll come to get you. He said, I'll leave the 99 and come for you. That's a shout for somebody. And so in this moment, there might be someone who feels locked out, who feels locked in, who feels like no matter what you do, you can't turn your situation around. And that's because you are trying to do it. The disciples were in the room and they were afraid. They weren't praying. John is real clear about everything about that happened. Amen. John doesn't say anywhere that they were, none of the disciples, none of the gospels say that they were praying. They were locked in a room. The testimony is when you get locked in, you seek the Lord. And so for the one that might, the one or more than one that might feel like you are locked in, surrounded by this prison, and you don't know how to get out, stop trying to get out and invite Jesus in. Mm -hmm. That's you and you've never confessed the Lord. Jesus is Lord and Savior of your life. We invite you to come. If you have confessed Jesus and you're straight away and you need to recommit your life to Christ, we invite you to come. If you need a church home, a place where you can grow in faith, where you can work out your soul salvation, where you can have folk that think like you and believe like you and struggle like you, amen, we invite you to St. Paul AME Church. No matter church. Not saying we're the absolute best, but no better church than St. Paul, and I would love to be your pastor. You might be on the virtual platform, and you say, oh, I don't live anywhere near the DMV. It doesn't matter, because we will always have a virtual presence. So if that's you and you're online, we invite you to visit our website, stpaulamedc.org. Click on the tab that says connect with us, give us your information. We'll reach out, we'll pray with you, we'll encourage you, and we'll welcome you into the household of faith. Is there one this morning that needs salvation? Is there one this morning that needs to recommit your life? Is there one this morning that needs a church home? The door of the church is open. Amen. And if there's one this morning that needs prayer, the altar is open. We invite you to come. If you need prayer this morning, we invite you to come. Amen. All hearts and minds are clear. Come on, let's give God praise for all this time. All this suffering. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to leave, to leave this place, I pray that the Lord will bless you this week. The Lord, that the Lord will show up in unexpected ways and miraculously remind you that, that we serve the risen Savior. And nothing will keep Jesus out. Nothing will keep Jesus away from you. Nothing can stop the love Jesus has for you. Amen. Amen. And now may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon our work of worship done in your name. Father, give light to guide us, courage to support us, and love to unite us. Henceforth, now and forevermore. And the people of God sang together. <laughs>